Hello, my name is Megan Schlickman. I am the owner of Nexus Financial and I'm here to help you with all things Jobber and QuickBooks related. So this is going to be video two of kind of a series that I'm going through that includes the proper workflow of how you should be moving between the two software um, from the moment you collect a payment from a customer and then how to take care of that all the way in QuickBooks. So if you haven't seen video one already, the first step is to accept the payment in Jobber first. That's the number one thing you should do. And at the end of the video, I left you here where I highly suggest that you need to sync the QuickBooks online. If you have the older sync um, prior to summer 2023, it's going to look a lot like this. If you have the newer QuickBooks sync, it's going to bring up a different window that's like a dark blue window, and then you can just um, follow the prompts to push the sync to QuickBooks online. Um, both should stem from this QB icon in the upper right hand corner though. All right, so that is where I left you off. We synced the payments from Jobber. Now we're in QuickBooks. So from here, step one is that we need to find where the transaction hit the bank account. So you need to work about two or three days behind schedule of when the payment happened, right? So say maybe on Monday, um, you performed a service for a client. Um, that is when the invoice was sent out. Tuesday, they paid you for it and you received the check in hand and you took a picture of it with your phone to deposit it, it's not going to clear the bank until probably Thursday. Um, but when you deposited the check, that's when you enter it into Jobber, right? So that workflow is set up there um, immediately when you get the payment. So by Thursday, it should clear the bank account. So I would say you're working about two or three days behind um, when the payment was collected, maybe Thursday or Friday. Um, I do monthly bookkeeping, so we work on a monthly basis. Um, that's kind of why we have a lot of deposits here. Anyways, so from you've, you've finished your job in Jobber, you have deposited the check and it has cleared the bank and it has come through on the banking screen. So your screen may look a little different if you're in business view or accountant view inside of QuickBooks. Um, but from here, you're going to go to bank transactions and you can find your uh, bank that it deposited to. And then it's all listed out. So these are all the deposits that I'm going to need to match to payments. And I'm going to walk you through an example here. We can see on January 26th, there was a ATM check deposit for $3,098.26. This is the example that I want um, to show you. So uh, my focus is on here. I have on another screen at the checks that made up this deposit, so I know exactly what I'm looking for. But when you are doing this example yourself, you should also pull up probably your banking screen to see um, which checks make up that deposit. If you only deposit one check at a time, it should be pretty easy to tell based on the dollar amount and the cent amount. Um, but I know that this customer deposits a lot of checks at the same time. So I need to reference the bank statements and their banking screen to see which checks this makes up. So once you found the one you are going to focus on, we're going to do one deposit at a time. Um, we're not going to do all the deposits at the same time. It's one at a time. Um, so from here, I know I'm focusing on this 3000 sum deposit and you're going to click on this plus new button in the upper left hand corner. And then you're going to select bank deposit, which is going to pull open a new screen. So I have that here onto another tab. We're going to pull it open. And this is the data sh that should have already flowed from Jobber. I did not enter in any of this data that you are seeing on the screen in QuickBooks. It was originally entered in in Jobber. I pushed the sync. Now that I open up the bank deposit screen, I can see all the information that Jobber pushed over. And this is perfect. So I'm referencing the banking screen. I know exactly which checks make up this 3000 sum deposit. And I'm going to select on the left hand side which ones those are. Um, so we're going to start off with this 10581 check. And then the other two were larger amounts, so I'm going to find them. And 
and this 4744 check. <clears throat> and then there's one more check that it makes up. And previous screen. And this 226 check, perfect. So then when you are finished checking all of the payments, make sure that the ones you are selecting are payments. This should not say invoice. You're not matching it to an invoice. You're matching the deposit to a payment that was recorded in Jobber. So once you have all the payments selected that make up the deposit, um, first, you should make sure that the date is correct. So when we looked on the previous screen, it was January 26th. So I want to make sure that is correct. Make sure it's to the correct bank account that it is deposited to. And then we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and see if the selected total amount or this total amount equals what we want it to equal. And that is exactly the number that I want it to. So from here, when it matches up, go ahead and hit save and close. And you're going to scroll back down to your deposit. And here it is. So it should automatically pull up as one match found. That is exactly what I want it to. And I'm going to hit match. And that is it. Now I'm going to work on another deposit and I'll be right back. All right, I'm back with another example. So what we just did was a check deposit. If you have a check for just $500 to one invoice, that should be pretty simple. And then I showed you how to do it, such as if you had one check for two invoices, then you find all the payments that it matches to. All right, so moving right along to another example, this is going to be an ACH payment. So maybe your customers do not always pay cash, check, um, or card. Maybe they do an ACH payment. This is really popular with business to business transactions. And what they'll do is an ACH. So the bank memo that comes up is going to look a bit different. Somewhere along the bank memo, it will probably say ACH deposited. And what your customer should be doing is sending you a remittance to your email. The remittance contains information such as an identifying number, um, what invoices were paid, how much for each invoice was paid, the total amount, the date, and so forth. It's basically a receipt to you that proves that they paid ACH. So I'm going to do one of those examples. Um, we have one here for January 8th, and the total is $2,743.34. The remittance I received is for January 5th. It didn't hit the bank account until January 8th. So again, you probably need to work two to three days after you receive payment. But the moment we got this email in the inbox, the remittance email, that automatically can be put into Jobber and pushed over for a sync. And then I'm just waiting for it to clear the bank so that QuickBooks pulls it over. All right, so now that we have that information, um, once again, we need to find which payments in the bank deposit screen make up this deposit. So again, back to video one, you should have already accepted the payment into Jobber. You push the sync. We see the transaction here in QuickBooks. And then from here, we're going to go to plus new and bank deposit. It will open up a new screen for us. And from this screen, we need to find all of the payments that make up that $2,743 one. So that remittance covered two invoices for this customer. Um, one of them is going to be in the amount of $1,564. And then the other one is in the amount of $1,100. Oh, one more page. 1179.21. Perfect. So I'm going to verify the date. Um, you can choose either the remittance letter date or the date it cleared the bank, um, especially over a holiday weekend or a normal weekend. Those dates could have some variability, but it does not really matter if you choose the 5th or the 8th. I'm going to choose the 8th because that's the day I actually cleared the bank. And then I have the correct bank account here. And then this total amount, 274334, is exactly the amount that I want it for. So hit save and close. And if you go back to your transaction screen, 
Make sure you find the correct bank account. And then we're going to scroll down to that 2700 amount and it will automatically pop up here for you to match and that is it so i hope this was helpful for you to know the second step in the process of collecting payment between jobber and quickbooks um, once you do this for all of your deposits really the next step is to take care of your expenses and go through the reconciliation in quickbooks there's not much else that jobber has a big role with unless you track your expenses inside of jobber um, but i hope this helps clear out any confusion that you have between the sync between the two and I look forward to talking to you guys next time.